Audrey Miribe, Nuguchu Nuguchi Rubadana, Lida Guinea Furumienti Lagueira Garifuna, Owenbu Nugunda Garifuna La Nuguya. What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. For those of you who are just tuning into my channel, I moved from New York to Rathan in 2011. So I created this space right here to share information and inspiration about living abroad, specifically here in the beautiful island of Rathan. And today I am talking about Garifuna people. Garifuna, Garifuna, tomato, tomato, we don't feel offended. I am a Garifuna woman. And I feel it was important for me to launch this blog at this time because being Garifuna has a lot to do with my reason in living here on the island. So before I continue mentioning Garifuna this, Garifuna that, you know, I don't want to lose y'all and y'all be like, well, what is this girl talking about? Who are Garifuna people? So today we are talking a little bit about who Garifuna people are, where they come from, and why you should know about them. To get started, I want to get started with debunking the shipwreck myth. It's time. <laughs> the shipwreck myth is what most people would refer to as the way the Garifuna culture was created. It states that there were two slave ships that shipwrecked near the coast of St. Vincent in during the mid-1600s. And the slaves who survived that shipwreck escaped and settled on the island of St. Vincent. They mixed with the indigenous group of people who already inhabited that island. And the fusion of those two cultures gave birth to what we know today as the Garifuna. So started, now this was very convincing to me until I started my black studies minor in college. And our professor introduced us to the book, They Came Before Columbus by, Av by Ivan Van Sertima. So this book talks about the different African explorers and, and the different African empires that already established themselves in the Western world pre-Columbus pre -Columbus days. And he mentions, he references the Mali Empire, Abu Bakari, which is the famous Mansa Musa's brother, how he gave his throne to his brother Mansa Musa and went to explore the West world, established different villages all over the Western world. So after reading that book, I started thinking, well, if there are African people in the Caribbean before this shipwreck, then it can't be that a whole nation of people was created because of this one shipwreck. So here's the enlightened explanation about the origin of the Garifuna people. Garifuna people are the product of an Arawak Indian mother and an African father. However, that mix did not happen solely because of the shipwreck that occurred in the 1600s. There were already African people in St. Vincent and all over the Caribbean way before the 1600s. Therefore, the shipwreck that occurred in the mid 1600s just added to the population of Africans on the island of St. Vincent. That shipwreck, nah, throw it. Throw it away. <laughs> so, now that you know how Garifuna people came about, now I'm going to explain how we ended up from St. Vincent all over Central America. We were on the island of St. Vincent. We had a well-established life. We were self-governed, self-sustainable. We were living good. We were happy. Until the British decided to colonize St. Vincent, as they were doing all throughout the Caribbean, but the Garifuna people were like, oh no, we're not having that. We're going to war. We're going to fight. You are not going to enslave us. We declared war and we were fighting for many years. Eventually, the Garifuna people lost the war and the British exiled them. But before exiling the Garifuna people, they rounded up the 5,000 most rebellious Garifuna and sent them to the island of Baliso, which is Basically, it's part of the Grenadines, it's in the same area. Now, I call that an intent of genocide because that island, it was uninhabitable. There was no fresh water, you couldn't um, harvest your crop, you couldn't use you know, the material with the trees there to build your homes. And so the Garifuna people began to die at a at rapid rate. 
I guess it was too much debt at one time for the British or who knows who knows what, what made them have a change of heart. But anyway, they decided to ship the Garifuna people from the island of St. Vincent to a far British territory that they had at the time, which was the Bay Islands of Honduras. But that wasn't part of Honduras in that time of history. It was British territory. So they shipped them all the way here to the island of, Ro of Roatan. Out of the 5,000 who were exiled, only about half of them actually made it alive to the island of Roatan. Now at that time in history, the Spanish had control of the mainland in Honduras. And they convinced a lot of the Garifuna people, most of them who landed on Roatan, to move to the mainland in search of work. They were promised, you know, a better life. They convinced them. So out of the 2,000 plus that arrived to Bratan, only about 250 actually founded this community of Punta Gorda, Roatan, the first Garifuna settlement in Central America. From here, they established the first Garifuna community on the mainland of Honduras, which is Trujillo. And after Trujillo, they just continued to establish more Garifuna communities along the coast. So today there are about 36 Garifuna communities in the country of Honduras. Now apart from Honduras, we also spread out to Guatemala, Belize, and also Nicaragua. So present day, 2020, there are established Garifuna communities in those four Central American countries. Now let's talk about our language. So Garifuna people speak Garifuna. So yes, Garifuna is not only the name of our people, but it's also the language that we speak. According to Garifuna scholar and educator Ruben Reyes, who wrote the who wrote this Garifuna dictionary, I love this Garifuna dictionary because dictionary because it's in Garifuna English and Spanish. Now this book can be purchased online. So I'm gonna really, I'm gonna leave a link to this book for those of you who are interested in about the language. You can purchase this book online. Our language is comprised of 45% Arawak, 25% Carib, 15% French, 10% English, and the other 5% depends on the region in in Central America where the Garifuna community is located. So, for example, in Belize, their language, their, the native language is English, right? So the Garifuna people in Belize have a lot of English words mixed into the Garifuna language. Whereas the Garifuna communities in, in Honduras and Guatemala and um, Nicaragua, those are Spanish-speaking countries. You can hear a lot of Spanish influences in the, in the language. Spirituality. Garifuna spirituality is based on the communication between the living and the dead, pretty much our ancestors or the spirits as we refer to those who have passed. There are different types of ceremonies that are held to honor those who have passed and, and each, each ceremony has their particular reason. The person who's the, like the medium or the person who facilitates this communication we call them a buye. A buye, you can think of them like a shaman, which is the person who has a natural born gift to communicate with the dead. So whenever there's some type of ceremony that has to happen or healing or families going through something that cannot be explained illogically, they will consult with a buye for guidance. Buyes also have extensive knowledge of natural healing. Sometimes it's not that they know, but the spirits guide them to the correct combination of natural healing for the person who is sick. So that's another reason why somebody might consult with a buye. Now, one of the major ceremonies that Garifuna people conduct is called a dugu. Is a lot of people know about it. And there's no specific time or date to perform a dugu. The date of a dugu was basically determined by the messages that have been sent from a loved one who has passed away. 
somehow, some way that loved one has communicated with their living relative about doing the ceremony. Nowadays, because this is looked upon as a taboo, a lot of Garifuna people ignore these messages. But when a family realizes that there's just too much going on that cannot be explained logically, they are then forced to consult with a Buye, which the Buye would then confirm, yeah, um, your people stay upset and you need to do a Dugu. And so they start organizing this huge ceremony. Now, a Dugu is like a spiritual reunion between the living and the dead. It lasts about four to six days. Different rituals are, are performed during this ceremony. A lot of offerings are given as far as food. So the ceremony usually results in some type of healing, um, breaking some type of family curse, abundance, forgiveness, healing. So that's what this um, ceremony is for. It's basically a family reunion that is necessary because ancestors see and know what we don't see and what we don't know. And they're trying to say, okay, let's do this thing to clear your path. So where are Garifuna people today? We're all over. <laughs> Garifuna people are a transnational people. We are all over the United States, especially in New York, New Orleans, Texas, Florida, um, Jersey, all over the East Coast, um, California. Seattle, Washington, Massachusetts. We're also in Italy, Germany, Canada, Spain. The most beautiful part about this is that most Garifuna people still identif identify as Garifuna. The Garifuna story is a triumphant part of black history and that is why I am so proud to be a Garifuna woman. I read about so many of these strong black civilizations but that's all we can do nowadays. You know, you can just read about it, maybe find some video. But with the Garifuna culture, a specific group of black people who resisted slavery and preserved every aspect of their culture until today, 2020, still exists. And it's just so amazing. You can literally go and visit these Garifuna villages today. You know, like book your ticket and go see and interact and speak with the elders. We're still here and we ain't going nowhere. So, yes, I am so proud to be able to share this culture, to be able to share my culture. And this is why I did this video today, because it has a lot to do with the reason why I live here on the island. As I said before, my family, we have a, a cultural center here, Flamingo Cultural Center in Bundai, Florida. And what we do is we share our Garifuna story with visitors in different fun ways, you know, whether it's showing you how to fish the Garifuna way or cooking lessons, how to grate coconut on one of these, on one of these, like this wooden grater behind me. So we have different experiences for you to, to try. And I'm going to leave a link in, in the description box below. I'll do another video explaining in detail what we do offer at the Cultural Center for those of you who are planning to visit the island and learning more about the Garifuna culture. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or any comments, if you know any other information that I don't know, please feel free to comment or send me an email, connect with me through Facebook and like, like, and please share this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Then came Rathan. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you're watching me. It was a pleasure for me to share with you all today a little bit about my culture, the Garifuna people. Till next time. Bye.